Hey everybody, this is a very uh, nervous Carnivore talking to you on a, on uh, Friday, um, February 25th in the afternoon. Uh, I wasn't really sure if I should make this Carn Talks uh, because like I wanted this channel to be a channel where I share um, my thoughts about things I love and uh, express um, myself. Uh, I, I didn't want. I didn't. I thought it would be deep, but I thought it would be deep maybe about the inner thoughts of human beings and psychology and 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 about like creation of of art and and writing and stuff like that. I didn't think it'd be deep like. <laughs> talking about war and politics and and um you know these kind of aspects of life um but like i just said like i also wanted it to be a place where i express myself where um maybe in day-to-day -day life i can't so i wanted to talk about um you know what's been going on in the news lately and this um, war that's happening right now in Ukraine um, and how it's affecting me and, and how, I mean, it's all, it, this is all from my perspective, right? Like I'm not, I don't live there. I don't know people directly who live there. I have friends who have family there. Um, not many, you know, not many, but like I have a few friends that have people are, have interests, uh, loved ones, uh, people they know. Um, you know, that their hearts are, are at least partly in, in Ukraine. And um, also, like, even if I didn't, it's like those are people. Um, and this is, this is something that's infected, affecting the entire world right now. Um, Everybody is looking at this, and um, I think rightfully so. It's like, I don't know, it feels like such a major event. It feels like the start of something very dangerous. It feels like the threat of this fire spreading out of control is very real. Uh, at least to me, you know, like a, a, an uneducated... <laughs> um, you know, a person just sitting in their, their American home, uh, you know, looking out. It, it just seems like something that could, um, you know, boil over and cause a lot of terrible problems in the world that's already having tons of terrible problems. Uh, so I guess I just want to talk about it, talk about how I feel, and um, just give some thoughts about uh, what's going on. Um, before I start, I just want to say, like, when I, when I talk about things that are political or, or uh, things like this, uh, I do feel like a fool. I feel like I, I never have enough information, um, to tell exactly, um, what is going on, especially these days where information's all over the place, um, a lot of people get their information from the internet and it's so difficult to say what's what's real what's false you know n news media doesn't have such a such a hold on on being the truth these days it feels uh, it feels like these big news corporations have their own interests and they will keep their interests in mind whenever they have the news up and running. Um, it's For some channels, it's very blatant. Like, uh, Fox News is, like, insane with the amount of, like, bias that they have. Like, uh, but I also think the other news channels, like CNN and MSNBC and all these other channels, like, they, they also, like, they'll... I don't want to go too into detail on this subject, but like, 
they'll say like, oh, this is a bad thing, but then they'll also have information, more information about what's going on that would maybe conflict with their interests, and then they don't show that information. Um, you know, like they choose not to air it. I've heard about r reporters and journalists like being very frustrated about this, like they ha them having more information and just not being allowed to talk about it on air and stuff like that. Um, so this is a very like weird time uh, for knowing like what is the truth and what is actually what's going on. Uh, I think for me what I try to just do is I try to hear as much of everything that I can and then, then try to use common sense which what is that even really like um, for me it's basically like I, I find sources that I know tell the truth right because they tell the truth about things that are obviously the truth things you can see things you can verify with your eyes and ears you know so when they talk about things that I'm not so sure about I'll believe them for the most part skeptically maybe but I'll believe them and then move on from there if I see something contradictory I'll say all right maybe this isn't completely true or maybe there's more to this than uh, than I know uh, and that's I, th I think that's the best that I can do right like uh, it's hard to tell where to go it's hard to tell what to look at when you're trying to see what is the actual answer and there's so much like cover-ups and and misinformation that it's very hard to weed through it all and I'm sure I'm not maybe even 90 percent <laughs> you know correct about a lot of these things but um I don't know, like, from what I do know, like, I feel like we, we, this might be a possible, like, World War Three. I don't, I, I see that no one's calling that officially, calling it that officially, because of the implications, because of how scary it is, uh, because of uh, probably tons of reasons, uh, you know, not wanting to whip people into a frenzy, uh, but it does seem like, sorry, I'm cracking my knuckles because I'm nervous, uh, <laughs> But it does seem like a very high tension, very high stakes situation. You know, there's a lot of wars that that start with one country deciding that a different country or a different province or a different uh, land belongs to that country. I mean, World War One started with the assassination of Franz Ferdinand basically setting off a powder keg in Europe. <laughs> And, and its neighboring countries and, and them all, I mean, debatably, uh, right? Like that's, that seems to be like what the, the start of that war was. But um, World War II, you know, which, which technically started with the end of World War I, <laughs> uh, but was real, World War II really got into motion when um, Hitler started invading um you know austria and czechoslovakia you know and then decided oh you know i could do this maybe i'll take some poland maybe <laughs> you know um you know deciding that more and more of the world belonged to him and it seems very similar to to what's going on today oh, excuse me uh, you know, we have a very egotistical Vladimir Putin, um, but also like very intelligent and very, um, very ready to play the long game in order to get what he wants. Uh, someone who's been setting this up for, for a very long time, uh, who's been weakening his political rivals and um, his rivals on like the world stage like slowly from any from any like direction he can weaken them from uh you know this guy is ready to to go after what he wants and i i think he just wants everything <laughs> like you know uh i guess i'll talk more about putin later 
Uh, but I, what I really wanted to talk about is just like what I've seen because I'm not, you know, I'm not a historian. Uh, when I was learning things about, first of all, the United States or the American um, educational system doesn't teach you a lot. Like they kind of hit upon these things. They want you to remember dates and and like key events for a test. And then after that, your, your brain starts deleting all this information <laughs> uh, until you get older and then you wish you knew uh, more about what was going on. And then you start seeking it out for yourself and then kind of learning what actually caused these, these big, you know, these world wars and these big movements in history, these these times that uh, change the course of the future and uh, and even then it's like it's difficult to get the information because it, here like I feel like the access to the information is very skewed towards the American view of it you know or the American point of view um, so anyway, I was, um, they've been talking about this for a while now, you know, Putin's been lining up his, his forces around the borders of, uh, Ukraine, uh, for, I don't know if it's been a month, something like that. They've been talking about, you know, this escalating and, and getting closer and closer. And finally, I think it was two nights ago, uh, he moved in. And um, and the war started. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of like the Ukrainian people's reaction. Uh, that's very disheartening. A very uh, it's very terrifying. Um, which I mean, it's so common to the the reactions in other these other wars that we've had, you know. Um, I can't even think of an example. There's like so many, I can't remember what the most recent was one to this was. The reason I'm like focusing on this is A, it's happening today, and B, I feel like, like, the political... Like what happened in the United States over the last like eight to ten years, like is a kind of a cause of this situation. Um, I feel like we put a person in power who didn't know what they were doing, didn't care about the state of the world as much as they cared about the state of themselves and what they they appeared as and you know like we just had a leader who was just incompetent and just evil and self-centered and you now a lot of these people who run for office are self-centered but this one was so so far like off the scale that it, it I feel like it ruined everything and, and caused this uh, I'm there's more to it than that, but I think it was a big part of what's going on And I don't know I'm just very concerned for how my country does things and as I as I grow older uh, Morality is like a big part Of what I value and I would like it to be a big part of what my country does and I guess in the past decade I've seen that like how much how much work we have to do to fix ourselves you know like it's really bad here and people don't even know how but a how bad it is b how much they contribute to it not being so great c what the bad is <laughs> like you know it's like people can't agree uh and i feel we're very divided and it, it's it's just a mess um so that's why I just feel so strongly about this. Um, 
I was speaking to my friend yesterday at work and she was having a hard time you know just concentrating because she's from that um, you know she has friends and and uh, I don't know about family she said mostly friends uh, in Ukraine um, she was scared for them she was talking to them she was saying telling me that they're telling her that they're hiding in the subways you know taking refuge um, I was seeing people talking on online about um, one woman was she wanted to flee the country and she had she had pets and she was like very afraid to leave her pets she decided not to and she got them across the border to Poland which is at least a little a little nice um, but there's people you know who are one person was talking about I don't know if I should stay in my city and risk getting trapped here or if I should take to the road and and risk dying or getting caught up in in the fighting or you know run, risk the car running out of gas or whatever uh, as they're trying to escape um, there's a, a mass exodus of refugees trying to flee into Poland uh, who it seems uh, from from what I've seen so far it seems like Poland is actually taking a lot of people in uh, but that puts a lot of pressure on them too you know a lot of a lot of European countries they have a lot of refugees from these wars these um, terror uh, attacks on on different areas Isis you know caused a lot of refugees um, like there are a lot of refugees in the world in that part of the world right now from all these different things happening and it puts a lot of strain on the countries that take them in because it's people who are displaced and they have different ways of being and, and it puts pressure on the people who live there and uh, causes difficulties it causes tension between the people the general populace and like the leadership and the general populace and the general populace you know um so it's scary um so apparently there's a long line of, of people trying to escape the ukraine on highways and stuff like that and police are going down um like the line of cars because a lot of them aren't moving a lot of them are backed up some of them don't have gas and they're the police are picking out um, men um, from ages 18 to 60 and like pulling them away from from their families and, and um, telling them that they have to fight in the in the war uh, I've seen some of the, the footage of that and that is some really um, scary sad stuff there's a father who was saying goodbye to his daughter She's just like you know tearing up and it's unbelievably sad like he's just trying to get his family out and he just he had to go and fight and they're both like crying she's very small she's like uh, maybe eight at most um, but yeah people are just being scooped up to go fight in the war um, apparently the, the um, there's a law now barring men from leaving the country who are you know those ages 18 to 60 the age range is very like telling too they must not have like I, I don't know what the Ukrainian military is like but it must be not a big force to be to be recruiting men up to age 60 you know what I mean it's like Lord of the Rings and Helm's Deep where they're putting the weapons into children and very old people's hands you know, it's very, uh, no, it's a very horrible, very scary thing. Um, so yeah, so that's happening. <laughs> um, yeah, I see footage of, um, you know, the bombs bursting over, uh, over the major cities. People take, there's footage of somebody, somebody's in their house. And a fighter, it's very clearly a fighter jet, like, comes, like, at them and just launches a missile. 
and it hits like somewhere nearby, I guess, or maybe even somewhere far away. Uh, I don't even remember the explosion, but you could just see it. Like it, it's like a movie. Like a fighter jet flies very low to the ground, launches a missile, and then the person in the house just gets terrified. Um, it's, it's some some really crazy shit. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel so bad for for. Because you see that, you know, even if you survive the situation, like, you're never going to be okay after that. <laughs> like, you're always going to be scared for your entire life. If you see something like that, um, I feel so bad. Uh, anyway, let's talk about more stuff. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, it was just like cell phone footage of a jet launching an attack from filmed from somebody's house. So the UK, uh, the Ukrainian president, um, what's his name, uh, Zelensky. Zelensky. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but it's Zelensky. He's a big target. Uh, I think Putin means to kill him and um, install a Russian government instead. Uh, he says his family is a target. Um, he's trying every he, he's trying every avenue to to get as much help and support as he can, uh, just to try to just, like I, I don't know what his goal is. I don't know if he it, it seems he he, does, he says he doesn't want to counterattack. Uh, he just wants to I think just drive the forces out. I think. He's asking NATO and and um, the West to um, like for any anything they can do any any cutting off Russia from um, any money that's coming in cutting them off from any technology that's coming in uh, which apparently that's what a lot of the sanctions are doing uh, yeah I don't know I I, did, I don't know what how how this guy is going to survive if he if you if he ever will or if he does i don't know what his end game is uh let's see uh, yeah and the the u.s and other countries are very hesitant like a, any move they make they're very they're being very cautious i think because um because of the tension of the situation because of you know, no one wants to wa start World War Three, um, which I guess is is possible. You know, like the the caution that they're using, like they're very hesitant to even like speak about what's going on. Like they're watching their words very carefully. Like no one wants to be the one to um, to set off the powder keg, uh, and I you know I don't blame them. Um, Someone said, uh, you know, it seems like it's already started. It's like, yeah, but there are steps, you know, there's steps of escalation. And no one wants to rush five steps ahead. You know what I mean? And it, it sucks, too, because meanwhile, people are dying. Um, probably by the thousands. I, I don't even, I haven't even heard any of the counts of the, of casualties. I just, uh, but I imagine they're probably high I've seen some of the damage uh, you know there's been missile attacks on major cities there's been tanks rolling in I saw f some firefight video uh, some footage of firefights going on uh, I imagine things are bad uh, yeah so the the world countries are very hesitant to um, to weigh in too heavily you know they're gonna try um, economic means of uh, stopping this war, diplomatic means, anything before before you know they try true uh, boots on the ground, uh, which might never be a thing. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how how they would go about fighting this uh, this war if they ever do. China is very hesitant to say anything because they want to do the same thing with. Um, 
<sighs> I can't even think. Taiwan. China wants to, uh, or is considerably, yeah. I'm going to start this again. China is considering how to handle Taiwan because China wants Taiwan. And, you know, half the people in Taiwan feel like they should be a part of China. The other half are like, no, it's, it, those numbers are fucking way off. I think a lot of people in Taiwan just want things to be the way they are. Uh, and then some people want to be independent and then some people want to be part of China. But uh, I don't want to get into that. I, you know, I'm nowhere near the expert in any of this. Um, but, uh, you know, part of me feels like I shouldn't be talking about this at all. But there's another part of me that says, like, in order to learn, you have to say stuff and then listen and see if you were wrong and then be like, oh, no, this was wrong. Um, but anyway, it seems like China is, is hesitant to, like, call out call this out as an invasion because of what they want to do with Taiwan or how they want to handle Taiwan. They're like, oh, let's see. <laughs> let's see how the world reacts to this. What happens? And let's uh, let's take it into consideration for, wh for what we're doing. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so the world is, is treading very lightly. Uh, you know, taking small steps to uh, to react to what Russia is doing. Um, you know, just little little steps like booting them from a song competition, <laughs> like a European song competition they got booted from. I was like, ah, that'll show them. <laughs> uh, but you know, I, I mean, some of the some of the more heartening news is like the the, the Russian people response. To, to this war starting uh, there there's protests um, in a lot of major city, cities in Russia and this is after years of um, Vladimir Putin putting down any opposition and and disappearing people who speak out against him uh, the police in Russia will will round up tons of protesters and then you know, imprison them for a little while or for a long while, depending on how they feel. And then, and then follow them and, and track them and track their families and punish them through all these awful means. But still, like, even after all of that, like, there's tons of protests across Russia uh, against the war. And it's fucking beautiful to see how many people are, are, so brave to do that you know so uh, just blatantly standing against uh, violence and it, that's something you know I'm, I'm i'm a person who's been kind of disheartened over over time about the state of the things but to see how like my faith in people has been tested quite a bit especially in the last like 10 years but to see that is is something it's like okay there's a lot of people who are fucking brave and they know it's right and they don't want this shit and they're willing to risk their lives and and their livelihood and their future in order to stand up for people who are uh, you know in a different country <laughs> you know like it's really, it's something beautiful. And at least people have my absolute respect. Um, it, yeah, it, it's just something amazing. It's also good to see, like, other countries. Like, uh, there was a protest in Times Square, too, showing solidarity with Ukraine. Um, you know, Europe, uh, Britain... Like a lot of countries, like just showing their support uh, for this small country that's uh, in so much trouble. You know, it's like the every it's it's like what the everyday people are doing. Um, it's it's I don't know it's something it, it's like a reminder that most people are are actually pretty decent. 
you know, whether whether or not they have all the information or not, it's like they they're like, no, let's not do war. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I you know. I don't know. I don't know. My friend was saying that maybe Vladimir Putin, while his army is occupied in Ukraine, like maybe his own people will do something to remove him. I don't know if that'll happen. I don't know how strong the resistance to Putin is in Russia. I know he's he's the type that that uh, any any leadership that rises up against him, any groups that rise up against him, he dismantles them in every way possible so I, I don't know how much danger he is uh, from his own people but um, yeah I don't know the, I mean I feel like that would be the best outcome is if like they just get rid of him and figure out things from there <laughs> you know it's gonna create it would create a power void and there might be some other lunatic that comes in but um, I think that would be like the best thing for now at least but I doubt that that's what's uh, what's gonna happen he seems to have such a firm grip on everything uh, another another group of like incredibly brave people are just like the journalists and the um, reporters that just flying into war <laughs> like on the ground taking video of building around buildings around them exploding taking video of firefights and stuff like that that's some crazy brave stuff and uh, you know as as much as i have qualms with the media i i feel like the journalists that go into that kind of situation and just kind of show you what's happening i think they're like amazing like that's unbelievably brave they just get the camera on what's going on <laughs> Um, th that's something that's for some real like you know ar I'm gonna go into a war armed only with a camera and a microphone I'm gonna just tell you what I see <laughs> like while things are exploding around me uh, that's some crazy stuff and very brave also very needed very important because uh, you know it's good for people to know exactly what's going on and how wars affect um, you know the people in them and the people around them um, you know you see you see that stuff and it, it sets off the empathy in people and then they want to do something about it so I think it's like very important uh, people online talking about this very very crazy stuff <laughs> just you know just arguing you know, it's just evolved into like nonsense um, some people are some people are telling jokes about what's happening and then other people are like you shouldn't joke about this this is so you know people are dying and it's like yeah but like this is how people cope and how they deal and they're like well you you're not coping with it you're not in that country and and you know you I don't want to do like a like an impression like the people saying that are dumb it's just they they have that's their reaction to what's going on and the people telling jokes and stuff that's their reaction you know everybody is affected by this kind of stuff especially if you're seeing people getting hurt people getting forced into the army people getting separated from their families like everybody has a visceral reaction to these terrible things um and they have different ways of expressing like their feelings and uh you know i think people need to be able to express how they fucking feel about shit even if they say something stupid or wrong or you know they should be able to say it and then see what people think about what they said but not like shut up like not don't censor them sorry but this is how i feel about that joke you said and it's like oh okay well it's you know <laughs> This is how I feel about, or why I said the joke, you know? I don't know. People just need to... Like, these arguments are just like, you, you should react to this the way I'm reacting to this. Because that is the right way. It's like, is it... <laughs> you know? Like, we, we're, we're very... People are very much alike, but we're also very much different. 
in how we process things and how we you know talk and how we express emotions and stuff like that it's so it's so weird to just be like to see somebody reacting to something so traumatic and then tell that person that no that's unacceptable <laughs> it's like, like people on twitter are, are responsible for dropping missiles on, on anything like calm down people and then uh, and then you know and then there's people offline who are just busy with their lives and and don't which i don't blame either you know because everybody's got their life life is filled with distractions um we have such limited time like i uh, this is the afternoon i plan to start this this recording this morning it's already the afternoon so much has gotten away from me and, and i just spent that time thinking about what i was going to say and how i was going to say it and writing down <laughs> this stuff you know life goes by fast and we have such limited time and it's like if we're not like directly um you know directly involved it's like we care but i gotta focus on myself and my family and stuff like that you know i it's tough it's tough to like first of all you feel powerless so you feel like even if i know this stuff what am i supposed to do with it you know i'm, I'm not going to be an activist because i have i have a life i want to live uh, I think that's, I'm, I'm not saying me, I'm saying I think most people, um, I think feel that way or they can't, like sometimes they don't have time, they don't have money, they got kids. If you have a job and a kid, like you, you have no time for, for, for anything, <laughs> it feels like. Uh, it feels like even if, like if you have a job, if you have a nine to five, it's like what, what time do you have to where you're not exhausted? Um, so yeah, so I, I, I don't know. I, I don't blame people for, for just going about their business. But I also feel like if, if that's the case, you should say, well, I'm just going about my business. I, 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 here, here I'm doing the same thing that the online people are doing, right? Just telling people how they should behave. <laughs> but I do feel like if the case is that you're not, I'm not really sure about what's going on, that you should say, like, I'm not really sure about what's going on. <laughs> Like, like I did when I started this video. <laughs> um, I think that's like a thing to have in mind. It's like I care. Uh, for me personally, I, I think just... I think information, like knowledge is power. Knowledge gives you strength. It, it shows you... Kind of, it should inform like what you do, like the actions you take. I feel like the more knowledge is better. I think knowing more truths is better, it makes you stronger, it um, gives you more tools to be prepared for life and stuff like that. Um, like yeah, like knowing, knowing something about politics, like maybe you can't really affect them, but you can, might be able to affect them a little, and that might be the bit that counts. Um, I think the last presidential election was very important and I think that um, you know people stepping up and deciding like I got to do something about this I think it 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 helped I don't think it uh, like if the car was going off the road we turned the wheel a little bit uh, so we didn't go off the road but we're still not great <laughs> uh, but if we stick with it, we can turn the wheel a little bit more and get a little bit better and, you know, so on. Um, so I think it's important for people to just know this stuff and, not, you know, uh, with anything. I think it's important for people to start learning history and, and starting to see patterns that repeat themselves and stuff like that. Um, you know, I see a lot of people blaming Biden for what's going on right now and I, I don't understand what they mean uh, <laughs> by that like uh, you know to me it's very obvious that that this started it actually started before 
um, the last guy was in office. But, um, you know, Trump did very little in the White House besides golf and then set things up for Putin, including this war. Uh, you know, Trump pulled support from, or tried to pull support, I'm not sure if he succeeded, from NATO. He kept complaining that the uh, United States um, was paying more than other countries in it, which I, I feel like is a, a valid complaint. Because everybody, all the countries decide what they're going to contribute, and it's percentage-based. And the United States was hitting their percentage or more, and then other countries were not. So it's a valid argument, but having NATO exist, I think, is is more important than than the details, uh, because you know you need allies in the world uh, more than you need enemies. And I think uh, Trump made a lot of those decisions at the behest of his friend Vlad. Um, you know, it seems like a lot of Trump's money came from or is tied up in Russian affairs, you know. And a lot of his decisions are based on what the Russians wanted to do. Which to me is scary because Russia had openly, you know, meddled in the election that put Trump in power. <laughs> Which, of course, he's not going to turn against them because they're the ones who who put him there. But um, just that situation, like, it seems so obvious, like, that that was going on to me. Um, you know, Russia and China were, are very openly against um, the U.S. And, and working against the U.S. because they want the position that the U.S. had been in since um since the end of world war ii you know they're vying for top country and uh they're not they're not being shy about it so to have you know our allies seems to be the most important thing in the world at the you know at the time um and we had a person in charge who was just doing everything he could to dismantle that and it seemed so blatantly because of his ties to, to Vladimir Putin. I, I, I don't understand how anybody could, could have... I mean, I guess if you just aren't paying attention or if you're only watching, like, one source of news that you could get that. But I don't know. Like, I, I feel like I was assaulted on all sides just from, like, living my normal life by, by evidence of this going on. Uh, there's a lot of people who say like we shouldn't be involved in what's going on in Ukraine or any other foreign affairs. Uh, but we're on like the, the world stage. Like this is, we got one planet and it's a circle. So if you go around it, we're gonna bump into <laughs> other people. <laughs> Doesn't matter which direction you go. Um, so I think, you know, you have to play nice um, the US and and Russia and China they're very much um, preoccupied with who is the best I, I you know we got like limited resources that they're fighting over and um, other things too and I don't know I, I feel like we're at a point in history where it's like okay we have to not worry about this like in each individual company, uh, yeah, company, country, there's like a Game of Thrones where everybody's fighting for political power, um, and power over the people in that country and influence and stuff like that. And then on the world stage, there's a bigger Game of Thrones. Same thing. Everybody wants to be the top dog and and lead the world and financially and and you know, technology, militarily. So everybody wants to win that game as well. But meanwhile, um, there are threats to the world from the, to everybody, you know, from like global warming and, and pandemics. You know, we just had like I, I say it like it's over, but, the, you know, coronavirus kicked everybody's ass. <laughs> like, you know, it's like the world was completely unprepared and we're just acting like uh 
Like that's not that could never be a thing again. Like it's oh it's over. That's it. We did it. Maybe in the next hundred years, but that could happen again. Super suit. Like the same kind of thing could happen. Um, you know. So we're really in a situation where we have to stop these um, this nonsense. <laughs> but uh, you know, people are never. Or the leaders of these nations are never going to do that, and and my nation is also like guilty of this uh, being this way, I should say. And again, with like with not being involved, uh, another aspect is like the United States is is a country built on bloodshed and and lying about that bloodshed. Um, but I think the the idea of it. And part of what it's become is a, it's become a big mix of all peoples around the world. And we like to say that we stand, oops, we like to say that we stand for what's right. And although we don't a lot of the times, I think it's always good to be pushing, I'm out of water, to be pushing for what is right. And I think standing up for underdogs who are, who otherwise would have no way to, to defend themselves um, is important. You know, like uh, part of the reason I'm I find politics important is is the morality aspect, like I said before, and I think that's that's part of it. You know, like World War Two, we waited for an excuse to get into the war, uh, but I think our involvement. In that was correct for the most part um, I, I think we we did a lot of things we shouldn't have done uh, but I think you know s stopping what was happening in Europe was was important uh, even though you know Japan was the uh, the country that had attacked us and got us uh, got us involved So, anyway, back to uh, back to my friend Trump. Uh, I, I feel like you know during his presidency, um, again, like because because that's what Vladimir Putin wanted. I feel like he spent his presidency dividing us, and um, you know turning the United States against itself. Like there are talks now of civil war. Um, he got a big crowd of people together and and, and flung them at, at you know our, our democracy basically and said no 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 force you know force this change force me back into power like he tried a coup attempt and uh, I don't like I I don't understand how people could could see that because it was on TV. Like, you know, like you don't see that and be like, "Oh, this is this is exactly what happened in in Germany." Like Hitler did the same thing. He tried a coup, it didn't work, and then he came back stronger and he tried again, and then it did work, and that's how he, you know, got got into power. Like you don't, like you don't see this as like an echo of of what had happened back then. And he did the same thing. He 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 turned the people in his country. Is the cat? No, I thought the cat was calling to come. Uh, Hitler turned turned the people in his country against themselves, and and Trump is doing the same thing. Trump turns people on immigrants, turns people on you know on each other, like turns families against each other, you know. If somebody's a Democrat, then they're no good, and they're liars, and blah blah blah. He calls other countries shitholes. You know, he weakened our foreign policy, like, you know, unbelievably. Uh, he kept he kept press. He would push that um, the fear against Muslims that started back in the you know in the Bush era. And he said it was all about like America being first, which is ridiculous because what what president didn't. Put America like first, <laughs> you know, because because immigrants can come to the country and then have 
like access to some benefits, it doesn't mean that the Americans don't come first in the eyes of America. There's problems. Yeah, holy shit. There's problems all over the place. There's people who exploit the system. But, you know, ironically, I don't think any president has put, you know, America not first, besides maybe Donald Trump. But, you know, like he put himself first and he, he ran this country like he ran his casinos, like into the ground. Um, you know, all his businesses, like a lot of them are, are, are cons and are, are, you know, like just, just pretend like that they, that they exist. You know, his, his university was just a big fat lie and, and he, he just ran the country like that because that was the only thing he knew how to do. And, um... We're suffering for it now. I don't understand how people don't uh, don't see that. You know, he didn't like uh, a lot of his foreign affairs um, positions in government. He didn't fill. He said, "You know, I'm I'm the one that you need to pay attention to. I'm the one who who's going to decide what the policy is." And then he went on TV and insulted our allies and scared them and you know complained about people not doing their fair share and threatening to pull out you know our defense of, of, of other countries unless they would you know get dirt on his political rivals and stuff like that you know it's like and the people he did appoint as foreign affairs like like uh counselors not counselors dign uh, dignitaries I guess counselors, not counselors. Fucking what? What's the fucking word? I guess it's diplomats. Although that's not the word I'm thinking of, but <laughs> that's the word I'm gonna use for now. So like the diplomats that he did pick and did put into to um, these positions in government, like they were terrible. You know, like they're, they're, they're awful. Like he pulled out of the the Paris Climate Accord, uh, which was just like an agreement. It wasn't even like a strong agreement, like a lot of the countries weren't following what they were saying they were doing, but it was something that bound them together as trying to like work together to fix this problem. Like it was a step. It was a weak step, but it was a step. Eddie pulled out of it. Um, there was the uh, Iran, what was it the nuclear deal? Just like all these, all these things that just destabilize the world, and and just help Vladimir Putin just do, you know, whatever he wants. Uh, you know, they, they had like a NATO meeting, and after after the meeting, like the um, U.S. allies were like, they had press conferences back at home, and they were like, we can't rely on the U.S. anymore. Like they just. They, they, <laughs> Like we're on our own. <laughs> like the United States has gone nuts. Uh, you know, Europe felt like the U.S. had pulled away from them during this during this meeting. <sighs> Me and meanwhile, like Trump refused to even throw shade at Putin, like a man who the U.S. defense and and cyber defense specialists had said attacked the U.S. Yeah, Putin said it. He said it. Oh, fuck, I, Someone asked him the question, like, did you do, did you perform these cyber attacks on, on America? And he, like, sort of candidly, but not really, was just like, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, if you, you know, I think maybe I possibly could have done it. I did it. Hi. <laughs> and he shared, like, classified information with Russian ambassadors. Ambassador, that's that's what I was looking for. <laughs> um, he um, ignored Putin putting out bounties on American soldiers. Like, this guy, you know, like... Uh, Trump hit Putin with a layup, and, and Putin went for the slam dunk. You know, and Putin, too. Like, he's, he's an autocrat. He's former KGB. He's a heavy believer in like might makes right, and and like total warfare. And I mean like, like fighting on all fronts, like psychologically, um, you know, 
cyber attacking and then boots on the ground and, and you know any angle he can come at you from he'll come at you from he'll lie to your face while he's doing it and this dude believes that America is like his number one enemy and his rival and you know he tried to bring us down from the inside out and I think he did a, a great job doing that like we're very divided now um with the country's filled with this different yeah disinformation and people who just like like there are people on tv right now saying how like how smart he is you know like trump's on the news like saying like oh what a good move <laughs> like, like he just doesn't give a shit he doesn't give a shit about people dying he doesn't give a shit it's crazy, you know, and, and Putin, like, you know, Putin disappears his political rivals, he disappears people's families, he, you know, he ruins lives, anybody who disagrees with him, and, you know, he's, he says that we're, you know, we're the bad guys, really, we're, we're his ultimate goal, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how anybody can look at this and just be like, ah, it's all that Biden guy. I mean, Biden's not great. You know, he's not the great, the greatest person to be in that position. I don't think anybody like over 70, I mean, it depends. Like some people over 70, their, their wits are about them and they have experience and knowledge, right? But they're also, they tend not to be savvy about like, what's going on today and what technology is and stuff like that you know there's a lot of senators or lawmakers that are making all these rules that they don't understand how the internet works you know it's like their kids you know let them go on amazon <laughs> and buy stuff like there's a lot of senators like that there are also very savvy ones that are very savvy and evil anyway i, I don't want to get too much into that but i just i don't know like i I just don't see how you can look at this and be like, "No, this is this is the 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 person who's here now. Like that's it's their fault. Like this hasn't like how do you not see that this hasn't been building over over a long time?" Uh, I guess the answer is just, you're just busy with uh, with your own life, right? Anyway, this this kind of devolved. Uh, kind of changed course from what I had meant to say uh, uh, anyway so I don't know I, I, I don't know what this is going to be I don't know if this is going to be World War 3 I don't know if, if Putin's just going to take Ukraine and and stop I doubt that uh, I don't know if, it, if the fire is going to spread. I don't know how dangerous this is going to be for the world. I don't know how long this is going to last. And I'm scared for the people directly involved. I'm scared for the people indirectly involved. Um, no, it, it's awful and scary. Uh, I was gonna say my heart goes out to you know the people who are suffering out there right now um, but I, I don't know I kind of don't want to say it just because I feel like it does nothing uh, <laughs> like it, I don't know I uh, I wish there was more I could do. I wish I knew what I could do. I wish I knew um, more about these issues. Uh, I wish I was more savvy. I wish I, w I was in a better position in life to be more active about these things I believe in or th these things I think about. I don't know. I guess this is my first step. Here's hoping this doesn't um, 
get out of control. Although I feel like it already is. <laughs> like, I, I'm, you know, I'm listening to myself talk and I just, I don't know, I feel very... Uh, disconnected I guess with with what's what exactly is going on and how you know I don't know I don't know what I'm saying I'm just I'm just upset <laughs> like that's all that's all it comes down to is I'm, I'm upset I'm scared for the world I'm scared for people uh, and I just wanted to express that uh, in this outlet that I have um, uh, yeah I guess that's it uh to anybody who's listened to this whole thing, thank you. Uh, I appreciate you listening to me talk about subjects I have very little knowledge <laughs> about. Um, I don't know. I, I just hope for the best for everybody. I don't. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to end this. So I guess goodbye. And and that's that's it. That's all I have to say for now. I don't know if I'll talk more about this. I think this might be it. Uh, I don't want. I don't want to fill my channel with this kind of stuff. I don't think. Like if I if I knew an expert to come and talk. Then yeah, but for you know it's just me. And uh, I don't know. There's only so much I know and so much input I can give that actually has any meaning. So for now, I guess that's it, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next uh, the next talk, I guess. Thanks, and uh, take care. Goodbye.